Right everyone, trying to keep it brief. This question is mostly about graph drawing, taking measurements from graphs and uncertainties. It was number four on the test paper there. Um, we're now doing a gravity experiment where we take measurement, we set some different heights, drop an object, measure the time it takes to fall downwards, um, do it three times, work out a mean, and then do the square of it, which you'll see why from the formula you're going to use. Um, but first of all, they'd simply ask you to use their set of raw results here for 0.8 meters drop and work out the average. You do that for 0.8 meters, you get 0.4043 recurring, round it to three sig figs like their other data is, you get 0.404. Similarly, for the 0.9 meter drop, you get these three numbers which average to 0.429 or 0.4286 recurring which rounds to 0.429 and then you're asked to square them and get those two that corresponds with the marking scheme it's just a bit of arithmetic and so you've now got your t squared measurements which they've asked you for and then they want you to plot these on their graph which i've got here now the first one which was at um, 0.8 on the x-axis and it's 0.163 on here you've got to be very careful because on this scale you see that's 0.16 that's 0.18 so the individual little so the little squares are actually worth 0 0.002 so when you're asked to plot 0 0.163 it's 0 0.1612 three so one and a half squares right you get that and you get your plot over there the other result point point one eight four is easier to plot because uh, if i just highlight both of these right that was the point one six three and this one point one eight four it so it's two of the little squares so yeah point point oh oh two and another point oh oh two so we end up with our two completed um, graph points there if I zoom out hopefully you can see this right when I zoomed out uh, I drew a graph line here and I made a point of trying to go same points under the line as there are over the line so I've got I sort of got slightly under slightly above slightly above slightly under on the line above under the line I made a point of not trying to make it go through zero i thought no, i'm going to i'm going to avoid that i'm just going to see what these data points show for me so i got all of that lot and then following their instructions yep you're asked to determine the gradient now usual way um as i think you've probably had drummed into you by now you do a triangle but you do a really big triangle you do the biggest triangle you can readily fit so i've gone for going all the way up to the end of the graph here and going all the way down to here now my choice here that there's numerous ways of thinking about that um i could have said oh right i'll uh, i'll take it to maybe you know, something convenient like a point 0.1 or zero or something like that but what i did was i thought well i'll find a place where it looks like there's a graph line um going across uh you know going across between two points and so i chose here and if you look here it, it's actually there nice in the middle of those four squares so i said right i've got 0 0.0026 0 0.026 there is the bottom of this line and this point here is easy to measure as well it's 0.13 yeah i just did that just to check that i was starting my graph there so there are the points for the bottom 0 0.13 0 0.026 then I went all the way up here and measured where I was here. And that is the end of the graph chart. I've got this, so that's 0.9 on the x-axis. Nice and easy. And then on this one, it has happened to cross, pretty much cross a line there. Oh no, it's the, the graph line, sorry, the, the red cross is on the line, but the graph is slightly higher. So I've called it as 0.1. 85 not as 0.184 because i've just got about another half a square there so those are my two lots of points and then worked out the 
length along the x-axis it's point 0.1 it's point 0.9 minus point 0.13 which is that place there and on the x-axis it's going to be it's going to be um, at its lowest point point oh two six and at its highest point point one eight five which gets me a y-axis of point one five nine so going back to the calc I stick those C graph oh yes I actually wrote them on the graph so there's my gradient calculation point one five nine right divided by point one seven seven because that's 0.77 sorry because that's what the difference for the x-axis was right I get 0 0.20659 round it to three sig figs uh, 0.207 is my gradient so back we go in here there's my gradient 0 0.207 um, you'll lose marks if you don't say what the units of the gradient are it is on the x we're measuring seconds squared time in seconds squared being all that little m it's time in seconds squared and on the x-axis it's distance in meters so your units are seconds squared meters to the minus one and there's just uh, there's just my little assumptions there uh, I, I said I wasn't tempted to tempted to go through zero and I also avoided being tempted to use the last point the last plot line plot and point as my as my starting point for the line because it's not necessarily a perfect bit of data right moving on from that um the bit of theory which is just straight from good old suvat is and i'll just have to zoom out a tad here uh right let's go to page page which should have been like that there we go if i go to good old suvat um you're getting um you're getting you know uh, s equals ut plus half a t squared that's there where their bit of theory comes from here t squared 2s over g rearrange it you'll end up with the gradient as 2 over g right um, or if you do it as a gradient then you will see that the that the yeah the gradient of the graph will be 2 divided by g so our gradient was 0.207 and then I've said, yeah, so, so I said uh, 2 divided by my gradient gets me G, and I end up with 9.662 meters per second squared. And again, round it to 9.66. Right. And I'm asked to figure out a percentage difference between that and the accepted value, the accepted value being 9.81. That turns out to be a difference of 1.53%. So not too bad so you know we're we're about um you know we're, yeah we're, we're about less than two percent out so not too bad and then calculating the uncertainty in the smallest value of of uh tm which was their uh, time mean now their smallest value of time mean is this um 0.245 here and we've got three readings so what we'll do is we'll pick the largest one 0.246 and the smallest one 0.244 and then we go over here and we say right the difference between those two the largest is 0.246 the smallest 0.244 that was the average and the range or the spread of those results they call it spread uh, is 0 0.002 and the rule is that the uncertainty is half the spread so half the spread 0 0.001 seconds that's what that's what they said in the marking scheme then calculate the value of g given this smallest value of of mean time and the corresponding value of s so you're not doing gradients here you just go straight back to your chart here that mean time was 0.245 that was at a height of 0.3 so we just put those into a rearranged formula from their theory here right that one t squared is 2s over g rearrange it g is 2s over t squared not with gradients just doing it this way g is 2s over t squared there is s is 0.3 meters so 2 times 0.3 then t squared for that particular one 
is 0 0.600 and there we go you work it out and you get exactly 10 meters a second that's what's in the well you get 10 meters a second you know to one or two decimal places you can either have it as 10.0 or 10.00 they accept either of those so that's okay but then they get a bit nasty on us and they say right figure out the uncertainty for your calculation here in G so this is sorry in part G so take that number and these numbers and work out what your overall uncertainty is so standard stuff um, if you're going to work out overall uncertainty right yeah they yeah, calculate the uncertainty of G that you got in part G uh, yeah calculate the uncertainty in the value of G now okay I've done it as a percent there um, okay so I will actually need to add the uncertainty in the value of G I seem to recall they actually gave it as a percent but then why right so my percent uncertainty in the time we worked out that it was an it was an uncertainty of 0.001 divided by the average 0.245 I get a percentage of 0.41 percent my uncertainty in s is what they've just told me it's point plus or minus 0.001 meters divided by the values for s 0.3 I get a percent uncertainty of 0.33 percent now they've said calculate the uncertainty in the value of g well I've got plus or minus point one point one point one five percent and I'll just check I'm following the marking scheme correctly here oops disappeared right um, okay yeah they've yeah that's right then I've got them they, I've worked out my percent uncertainty and then I have to work out my actual amount uncertainty so there you go missed that step but it's plus or minus point one point one five percent and so then I have the the, uh, the actual amount of uncertainty in G is going to be um, whatever our value was there it was oh it was 10 wasn't it so it's um, it's 10.00 multiplied by 1.15 percent so it's actually going to be um, so it's going to be 0 0.115 meters per second squared all right just check i haven't got my decimal places out there should be okay uh yeah 10 times 1.15 and so yeah you're getting it as point that's point one one five, which they have then said right round that to 0 0.12 which would be which would be sensible to do so round that to 0 0.12 meters per second so if once you've got your percent uncertainty right which I've got as, as that much all you got to do is multiply the actual uncertainty by that sorry multiply that and that uncertainty percentage by your value which was 10 meters a second and you get 0.12 meters a second as your as your um, absolute uncertainty right and then um, the last little bit of this we are keeping this brief was what would you do if you wanted to investigate the effect of changing the mass now of course this is the one where the non-flat earthers amongst you would just say well it doesn't make any difference changing the mass because you end up in the formula that doubling the mass doubles the force but it also by Newton's second law makes it twice as hard to accelerate so they should all accelerate at the same time well they're effectively asking you to see if that's the case but if you're going to do this properly right you need to use not objects necessarily of different mass the first thing you've got to start off is get yourself objects with different density because if you're going to make this a fair test the objects have got to be the same shape and size so they have the same air resistance because that is another factor in this and you've got to check that it's going to be the same for all your objects so get them to be the same shape and size and uh, the obvious one is you know have them as spheres 
so they've got, got the same aerodynamic properties for the shape will make a difference but just have them made of different materials or have some hollow some solid you know fill them with different amounts of stuff if, if they're if they're hollow and you can you know you've got a little cap inside them and then then measure each of their masses right another important point there's three marks here and then if you like repeat your your original investigation for each and obtain g so you can save yourself all the bother of you know measuring you know measuring the times over heights so say repeat the original investigation for each of them and get g and i think unless you're going up to some quite high speeds you shouldn't get yeah this should be fairly okay you should start you should get them all accelerating at about the same about the same rate unless it's over some big distances so hopefully that's given you a bit of help with uncertainties there and a bit of yeah a bit of really overwrought graph drawing but you know just do take care on these things don't do a titchy little triangle because you'll lose marks for that use as much of the graph as you sensibly can and you could pick some numbers that would help you i could probably have picked some slightly easier ones here um i didn't want to go down too much near zero because i'd keep wanting it to be zero it, it, i don't think it quite is i think it goes over slightly above and don't necessarily use a data point as one of your bits to draw a graph from i had one of my really good students really missed out because they actually use that data point and that data point to work out the gradient which is not not the way you do it you're, you're supposed to draw a line of best fit so here they are you see um below the line above on the line below above mm, below above yeah that's my best effort for trying to get a line of best fit right use a pencil because you might get it wrong the first time but i'm sure you'll manage so there you go that was just a bit about uncertainties and drawing graphs i thank you take care